local anesthetics. Now, I'm going to level with you guys. You've already had a lot of information. This is, this is a hard test. There's like 30 questions, and they get into detail. And I don't know why, but they get into detail about local anesthetics. You really have to know the specifics of some of these agents. And what I mean is like you have to know this is a long or an intermediate or a short acting. Like I, I feel like I remember a question about specifically asking which one of these is an intermediate. So I'm sorry, but you really gotta you really gotta know your stuff. So we'll do a general summary slide first. So the mechanism of action, these block voltage-gated sodium channels using um, some acid-base uh, biochemistry. They dissolve into the neuron, are held inside the neuron, and then they go specifically to the sodium channels. They attach to the sodium channels, and then they block the movement of uh, ions through them. And they are actually more effective in neurons that are actually more rapidly firing. It's important to remember the blockade. So first you'll block pain, then temperature, then touch, and then at the end, pressure. And if you guys remember, I believe the more delicate, you know, the cruder nerves and the, the, the so the, the, the pain and temperature are sort of, forget the specific nerve fibers, but they're more acute and, and and less crude and then eventually touch and pressure are these big bulky nerves so you need know, smaller tiny nerves first bigger nerves with more crude and widespread uh, sensations later uses range from minor, minor surgical procedures obstetrics dentistry epidurals what have you so there are two types they're the ester and the am ester and the amide type Esters are hydrolyzed very quickly in the blood, and they have a very short half-life. Amides are hydrolyzed by the CYP450 system, have increased toxicity in patients with liver disease, and um, can actually, the redistribution can actually dictate their duration of action, being, being the redistribution throughout the body and how long it takes for them to get to the liver and then be metabolized. So, you know, increased toxicity, decreased uh, uh, metabolism. Side effects. So there are CNS side effects. CNS activation can start first, then you can have depression, and then you could eventually have respiratory failure. So... You can have sort of a hyperstimulatory reaction to them. As this continues in toxicity, you can then have a CNS depression and then eventually possible respiratory failure. Lots of cardiac toxicity we know from our, you know, uh, physiology days that there are quite a bit of sodium channels in the heart muscle that play a very clinical, important role. And so blocking those voltage-gated sodium channels can be quite problematic, leading to decreased conduction rates, force of contraction, prolonging action potentials, refractory periods, and um, we can actually have severe vasodilation in all of them except cocaine. Cocaine is a vasostimulator, vaso, uh, uh, vasoconstrictor. And as you know, you'll see, some of these medications are actually antiarrhythmics as well, lidocaine. And then finally, some people do have hypersensitivity to some of the esters. So you do really have to remember which ones are esters and amides. But we have a way to do that. So the way is amides have two I's in their name. Lidocaine, prilocaine, mepivacaine, and bupivacaine. Bupivacaine. So as I said before, you guys, and I apologize for small text on the slides, but I wanted to fit it all on one page. Uh, so we have our amides and we have our esters. Lidocaine, probably the most commonly used, and it's the drug of choice for patients with an ester sensitivity. Lidocaine is an intermediate duration or an intermediate acting amide local anesthetic, and it can cause some drowsiness. Prilocaine, while it's on your list, does not have much information on it in your 
uh, lecture, so I'm not going to you know berate you with more detail, but you should know it's an intermediate actin. Um, mepivacaine, primarily used in obstetrics, it's an intermediate actin, and it can cause some be neurobehavioral side effects in neonates because it's used in obstetrics. Bupivacaine is probably one of the most popular ones that's used in obstetrics. It can be used in post-op analgesia and obstetrics. It's long durate. Dura it is long acting, which I believe is one of the reasons why it's used in obstetrics so long. You can give it for a spinal or an epidural, and it's going to last for 24 hours. Uh, but no, it can have some cardiac toxicity. So those are our four amides. Now we're going to move on to our esters. So cocaine is sort of the grandfather, grandmother, I don't know. I don't want to classify it either way. Uh, so this one is intermediate acting. It's actually very effective because it has some vasoconstrictive effects, and so therefore it can you know, cause itself to be in an area for quite a bit of time, and so it can be quite useful as a local anesthetic and then sort of expanding its potential duration of action because of that. And I think uh, when I was with one of the ENT elective, when I took my ENT elective on uh, general surgery, one of the one of the docs, a relatively younger guy, was you know really loved working with cocaine. He said it really worked well at stopping bleeding and numbing patients. He wished he, he could use it more. But anyways, uh, you know obviously there's a problem because there's high abuse potential and it is a uh, restricted drug. And as I said, it can cause vasoconstriction, and uh, it has a propensity for causing arrhythmias. Procaine, another ester, uh, it uses as an infiltration, nerve block, spinal block. Procaine is a short duration of action, and it's also found in combination oftentimes with epinephrine. Tetracaine, it's most commonly used as a spinal. It has a long duration of action, and unfortunately it can accumulate, cause some toxicities. Benzocaine, topical, used only. It should not be applied to open wounds. And it has no systemic effects because if it's applied topically, you know, you're not going to uh, have any uh, absorption. And then finally, you have chloroprocaine. This was another one that wasn't really on your list, but you do need to know that it's short-acting because the, I believe the, the test was a little nitpicky and it really wanted you to know some of the details such as or duration of action. Finally, we'll just talk a little bit about epinephrine in reference to local anesthetics. Some of them are pre-mixed with epi, and uh, because of this, and because of most of these local anesthetics, they, they cause vasodilation. We do want to try to keep the medication in the specific area that we're working with. So by doing that, we can give epinephrine. It can decrease the rate of the drug's absorption and therefore prolong the action and decrease the toxicity of the local anesthetic. However, you're injecting epinephrine, you can get restlessness, increased heart rate, palpitations, chest pain, and regional hypoxia. So if you give too much of it in areas like the fingertips and the toes, there could be a possibility for tissue necrosis because you're literally, you know, uh, vasoconstricting the capillaries.